どうもアメジンです皆さん海外の嫌な経験がありますか僕はねあの日本にいた時にそういう経験がありましたこの動画は、なんと言ってください。In Japan. Now, unlike Dan, I have studied Japanese culture extensively before I came to Japan. I majored in Japanese language and culture, actually. So,、uh, the points that he gave were, let's just say, not the same points that I have. I agree with、uh, nearly all of them to an extent, and I can see how his points would relate to someone who isn't as acquainted with Japan or someone who is new to Japan. I mean, when I was in Japan, I studied the freaking culture so much before coming that I had, I expected everything, you know? Anything that was thrown at me, I, I already knew about it. No culture shock, nothing. And just integrated right in. I want to go through his points first, kind of put my two cents in, and then、uh, go through my five things that I wasn't all too happy about in Japan. I'm gonna put、uh, his list right here, as well as timestamps in the description below, so you, know, you can feel free to navigate throughout this video. Friends and family living far away. Dan mentioned in his video that when you move to a country like Japan, you just get up and move countries, of course, you're gonna leave some loved ones behind. He said, this could be quite lonely for you, and this is true, especially you know, before you make good friends in Japan. I can't really relate to this point. I understand what he's saying, but I can't really relate to it because I'm the type of person, it's my personality to not be so attached to people like that. Uh, I don't have you know, friends, I don't even have family that I'm that attached to where I kind of miss them at all. I don't really miss people. Even you know, my family, I was totally okay with living, moving away from them and living on my own and just living far, far away. You know? As a young adult, I was actually ecstatic to have the opportunity to move countries away from my family. There was never a time in Japan that I got homesick or that I ended up really missing someone. I know people who are so, you know, like tight best friends with someone that they have to talk to them constantly, video chat with them, Skype them, whatever.、Uh, that's, that's just not me. It's just not my personality. However, this is a perfectly legitimate point for, I, I assume, the majority of foreigners living abroad. New culture, new rules. You know, Dan was also talking in his video about this feeling of being dropped into a whole nother culture and as a result being dropped into all these new rules. Here's a new culture and a new set of rules. Crack on. Well, that's awesome, but I don't know what them rules are or I don't understand how this culture works. I totally agree that this is a feeling that most foreigners coming to Japan will feel. Uh, again, I didn't really experience this, can't really relate to this point because I knew everything I did my research before I came, so it wasn't too bad for me. Feeling like you're lost all of the time. In his video, Dan mentions that you're gonna feel like you're lost all the time. Like, I don't know where I am. Every time I go to a new place, I've got no idea where I'm going. 
<laughs> for me, again, I never really experienced this because wherever I traveled, really, if I did any traveling, wherever I traveled, I traveled with a Japanese friend or someone who could speak Japanese very well. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> also, knowing the Japanese language really keeps you grounded. You can read signs, maps, etc. Racism. Dan mentions in his video that you can't escape racism, and I completely agree with that. He says he experienced a little bit of racism, but nothing too serious. Me, on the other hand, I experienced full-blown racism. And they weren't even Japanese. Instead, they were other study abroad students. You know, being that I've never experienced racism in Japan from Japanese people, that's great, I'm happy about that, but I'm, I'm not so happy that I wasn't able to completely escape it. Thankfully though, I was able to eventually win them over, change their minds, change their, you know, the stereotypes they had about American people. Eventually they became some of my best friends. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this video. I have plenty of stories. I'll, I'll have to make a whole nother video actually about this. It's quite interesting. The language barrier. You know, in his video as well, Dan mentions that not knowing the local language can be a real hindrance to your fun and to your, you know, success in Japan. I completely agree. You need to learn some Japanese, at least if you're going to live there at any point in time. Even if you're traveling, learn a little bit of Japanese. It's gonna be helpful. My mom assumed that everyone in Japan can speak English or whatever, people in the service industry, I guess. And uh, when she came here last year, yeah, last year, about this time, actually, um, she was shocked to see that that was not the case. Many, many, many Japanese people cannot speak English. I actually did research on this um, when I was in university for my degree. I have a degree in East Asian studies. And I researched English education and English proficiency among uh, East Asian and Southeast Asian countries. And every time Japan came out way at the bottom, if not the last country. That's true for a number of reasons. And I could make a whole separate video just talking about that, but uh, I guess I'll move on for right now. This video is getting kind of long. 